So this, uh, yeah, I, I heard a word here three weeks or so ago from a pastor who I, I really enjoy watching, and you've heard me talk about him before, uh, but just a wonderful teacher, and I heard a word given by him that just caused me, it really struck me to look back at my life and review from the time of when I was saved. And so that was like 34 years ago. And uh, I got saved just like I was 30. I got saved at the same time Jesus did. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it really did cause me to evaluate the blessings in the way God had, and I'm not emotional, like Miss Myra. <laughs> I'm going to be blubbering mess up here before you know it, but... but uh, God has taken our family through so much. And, and some of you who know us intimately know us well. Our two oldest daughters were on death's doorstep, and God delivered them both. You know, and there's countless other events that have happened in our life that uh, we have uh, been the recipients of God's blessings over the years. But in reviewing my life, it took me back to this, this whole word that I had received from this pastor. It took me back to the very early days when, I, and I got saved like, like, I was just immediately transformed. You talk about a new creature and becoming a changed person. But there was still a hint of flesh in me. And I'm only sharing this because I, it has meant so much to me these past few weeks that if anyone can relate to what I went through and the change that happened in my life, I want it to be the same for you. But uh, so this, this flesh that was hanging on, as much as, it, and it didn't matter where I, if I was in, the, I remember times at the grocery store or standing in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles and having to tell people about Jesus, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Uh, but this little bit of me was resisting, and maybe it was because of the teaching or uh, years of hearing different things, uh, but I was resisting tithing. I, I would go so far as to do the math, and if it was 8 or 9 or 11, as long as it wasn't 10%, because I was not going to be bound by a law. But as time went on, I began to learn that there was a lot of, well, I didn't understand uh, sacrificial giving. I didn't understand what, what it was like to give out of your heart because you wanted to, not because you were required to. But, but I did begin to learn some other clear pictures that giving sacrificially was not something that came about by law. Centuries, hundreds of years before the law even came, way back in Genesis, and I'll start, I have a, several little pictures of where offerings of all sorts were brought to the Lord, the Lord God, the Heavenly Father, by people who no, knew nothing about the law. And the first one, the earliest one, was Cain and Abel. And that's what caused the division between the two brothers. Uh, and let me read this, this short piece here. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. This is Genesis 4. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. Let me read that again. Verse 3. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his, and his, and his offering, offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Now, in, in the whole, if you read, if you're careful about the words that you read there, Cain brought some of his fruits from the land. Abel brought the first, 
the, the first fruits of his firstborn in his flock. And, and so there was a little bit of a difference. There was a teaching moment, but it, it created some real division. So um, that was just one of the... In Genesis 8, after a year on the boat, Noah and his family, his sons and their wives and his wife, got out of the ark, and, and uh, Noah built an altar, altar and gave a burnt offering. And that's uh, chapter 8 of Genesis, still long before, long before the, uh, the law came about. Now, in Genesis 14, there was the, the uh, issue with Abraham and Melchizedek. Melchizedek. I think that, uh, that uh, Abraham had done battle with the kings of the valley, or valley of the kings, and, uh, and won that battle. I think he was in the, in the process of saving a lot out of captivity, and uh, uh, went to Melchizedek and gave a tithe of everything, that all the spoils of war and everything that he had, he gave a tithe. And then later, later in Genesis, I think chapter 28, Jacob also had followed suit with that and had given a tithe to the Lord. Um, so there's just a number of places there. And let me, let me look at that uh, one that really stands out, Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Talk about sacrificial giving. story of Abraham and Isaac, and he took his son to give him to the Lord because that's what the Lord had asked. And Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father, he said, yes, my son, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. And the two of them went on. And you know how the story unfolds. There was the, uh, the uh, animal caught in the thicket and uh, was made available to Abraham, and he was able to retrieve it and save his son. Now, at the, near the end of that, we we'll started to... Uh, Verse 13, that's chapter 22. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacri sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Verse 14, so Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Now that was an important little passage right there. The Lord will provide. Because it really is how this whole picture started for me, was reviewing back my life all the blessings and the provision that God had given me. Even in my young, young Christian days when I still had so many questions. Um, but in, in not understanding the Lord's blessings and sacrificial giving, um, really getting caught up in the teaching and beginning to learn a little bit more and come to know the Lord uh, deeper and uh, understanding, hearing the Lord speak to me. You know, those were things that really opened some doors for me. And so uh, it didn't take me long to get past my little resistance and rebellion of what I assumed was the law. And uh, giving became a, a part of our life, Yolanda and, and I. Um, it kind of, uh, I, I think I could go on and talk quite a lot about our early Christian life, but I think I'll get, uh, now what is it? It's just now 11 o'clock. We'll, we'll be out of here by 1, 12.30, just kidding. Uh, I, I could, I, you guys who know me, I can babble on and womp, 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 womp forever. 
but I'll try to get right to the point and, and talk about what's really on my heart that I, I want to share with you. And hopefully, if it's just one person in here, I, I, last week we missed church. The, here I am babbling. We, we weren't here because it was so cold and we thought, you know, let's not, if the doors are open, you're supposed to be at church, right? And so if the doors were open, we're afraid, everybody's going to try to come to church and they're going to freeze their tush off. So let's just, let's just call off church. So I had another week to think about this message. And oh, the fear that rose up and the different questions. Oh, what are you going to say about this? Is everybody going to receive? Oh, is this, you know. And so I found myself really asking the Lord, you've got to come alongside me on this because I, I do not want to blow it. I really want to be a blessing to someone. Uh, so, I, and I really feel like he, he has. So let me get on to the passage that uh, is the, the basis, the root of this whole thing that the other pastor had preached on. <clears throat> and in my, <clears throat> in, in a very loving way, I think this passage has been misunderstood and maybe mis-shared over the years. I think it's part of what created that thing in me to resist was hearing it as uh, a little bit more of a requirement. And that's the famous Malachi 3. I want to start with verse 7. Let me find the... Here we go. Verse 7. Malachi 3 and verse 7. Let me give up. A, br a brief review of what this is. Now, Malachi translated means the messenger. This whole book, that, which is a very short book, but the whole book is Malachi speaking to the priests, the Levites, and the people of Israel, petitioning them. Uh, but he's doing it in, in a fashion of, a, of an oracle. The the uh, priest and the people will ask questions, and he'll put those down as kind of a, a sarcastic little question. But I ask you, or I beg of you, and, and then he'll give the Lord's response. And so this whole thing is a back and forth between the people of Israel and the Levites and the Lord. So I want to make sure when we're reading this, we understand there are certain questions or comments being made by the people, and the, then the response from the Lord. So, verse 7. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Now, this is the Lord speaking. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. That first, that first part there, was that to me, and, and I'm just going to share with you how God spoke to my heart. So that, that first part really felt like a relationship between a father and their children. Man. I don't know how many of you have raised teenagers, but man, talk about strong-willed children, and having their own opinion. I have arrived. I have all my life worked out. I don't need you teaching me anything anymore. Don't tell me what to do. This is my life kind of thing. Have any of you ever experienced it, or maybe even done that when you were a teenager? I was, that was a mess. My goodness. But, uh, so that relationship between understanding how much you would give for your children. You would do anything if they would just listen and walk with you. You would do anything. And that's what our Father is trying to say to us. Well, if you will walk with me, I will walk with you. I will be there for you. Then it goes on with more rhetorical questions. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, 
How do we rob you? And this, this whole next statement down to the end of verse 12 is the Lord's response. And this is the important part. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. Test me in this, says the Lord. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. And he goes on to say, I will control the pest in your fields, and so on and so forth. And just outlines what he will do to protect you and love you and take care of you and provide for you if you'll just walk with him. It's not a requirement. But shortly in your Christian walk, you begin to realize, oh my goodness. The Lord is just providing for me over and over and over. And yet I resist. Well, my, my whole, uh, <clears throat> I guess what really touched me was how it was viewing him as a father. And understanding that myself and having, having to walk through that process of being resisted. Do they not even love me? Do they not understand how much I love them? I would do anything. I would give them anything. And it's just been, uh, the Lord doesn't need our money. He really doesn't. What he's saying here is, you've taken away the opportunity for me to bless you and love you because you won't walk with me. You resist me. You rebel against me. And if you'll just walk with me, I will be your father. So as time went along this week, and I had so much more time to think about it and ponder it and pray about it, another event happened to refresh him, this fatherhood thing. And, uh, excuse me. But there's a young man in my life that uh, I've had the opportunity to mentor, try to speak into his life a little bit. And he's a young man, very hard-headed, and I got this kind of thing, which is fine. But I found myself wanting to be a little bit hard on him. Now, I've only got three daughters. I always wanted a son to be really hard on <laughs> I wanted to ship him off to boot camp, you know, when it came time. But, but the Lord didn't give me, he, he gave me three dollars, and I think he knew perfectly what he was doing to give me daughters to tenderize me and make me a father. But uh, the way of this young man, I found myself wanting to be very tough on him. And just this week, the Lord said, do you love him? like you love your daughters? And I couldn't say yes. And it really took me back to what the Lord was teaching me in Malachi. Just let me be your father. I just want to pour out my love on you. So I don't want anybody to miss this, this blessing, this opportunity. I don't want anybody to uh, resist or think that there's requirements or law. If you do this, you'll get that. If you do, you know, that's not really the way it works when you 
when you really get a hold of the love of the Father and that relationship with Jesus, it's like things just flow out of you. That's what I want everybody to experience. And, and really, in a nutshell, now I, I know it's not 1230 yet, but uh, that really was the essence of my whole message. I wanted the, the misunderstanding of what I thought had been misrepresented for years, decades, maybe longer. But in my mind, the message in Malachi 3 is... Just walk with me and let me love you. Let me bless your, your family, your home, your life, everything. I can't count the... Uh, and you've heard me talk about it before, different times. You know, they're, they're almost intangible, but the blessings that have come across our home, they're ridiculous. And I always use little pictures of how God blesses us. And they're almost intangible. We don't even realize that my tube of toothpaste has lasted four months, you know, or something. Little things like that. How, how stretched out your gas tank is and how long your tires last on your car. We don't even think about those things, but God is in the middle of our life constantly doing things, and in our daughter's lives, just blessing us over and over and over because we have chosen to walk with him and be his son and daughter. And that is really what I wanted to share with everyone this morning. Now, if anyone can relate to any part of what I shared, I'd like to spend time praying with you and uh, honoring God and his, uh, and his blessings and letting you feel a little bit, uh, or if you've if had some questions about the blessings and where are they, we can talk about blessings all day. I'd, I'd just love to spend some time with you if, if uh, there's anyone in here that has had those strange feelings like I had when I was uh, newly saved and young, young in the Lord. Uh, I would I would really love to spend some time with you talking about what the Father really says. So, but let's pray. Let's pray. We'll close this up. I could go on, but I I have uh, got my message across. I think, and the the uh, what I really wanted to share. I, I hope that it affects your heart and your feelings about the Father, and uh, that He'll. He'll bless your home just like he has mine. Okay, let's pray. Father, I just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you've given me a family here that I can share my heart with, that understands me. I thank you, Lord, that you are my father. These are all my brothers and sisters, and Father, I just want you to pour out on them just like you have on me. There's so many of us here, Father, that just love you. Help us to feel your blessings and put them in a tangible way so that we can just rejoice. Our homes would be filled with joy and happiness. Even though we live life and we go through this world, Father, just like everyone else, somehow we find happiness even in the issues of this world that we live in. So, Father, I just pray that you pour out your blessings, your love, your provision on each one of these family members here this morning. Father, that they would continue to feel your love and your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.